Okay, so this is a test video. This is definitely not the start of my attempt at a streaming career. Um, I'm just trying to make some videos for my friends on the Curse of Strahd Discord and subreddit on a couple of questions we've had about Foundry. So one of the first things I've had is about how to create a character or an NPC. So I'm not going to go through all the settings in this. I'm doing a very specific thing. I don't even have a scene active in the background. I'm just in a totally blank boundary. I'm going to go to the Actors tab. I'm going to click Create Actor. I can choose whether I want this to be a character or an NPC. So that will dictate the type of screen we get next and what settings we have available. The reason behind this is you can get modules or change settings that will configure how your character sheets look. Sometimes you might not want all the features from a character sheet to be available on an NPC sheet, for example. If you're just creating a wolf or a goblin, you maybe don't want sheets available for backstory and traits and flaws and things like that. Or maybe you do. I'm going to pick character. What is this character going to be called? We're going to go with Chad Cleric. Click Create. And we have the basic, totally blank character sheet for Chad Cleric. Um, I can choose his picture. Now, this is not where you'd put your token. The picture you put here can be a token if you don't want to use art, but this is the picture that if the person walked into the tavern and you wanted to show your group, you'd right click on Chad Cleric. Um, and in the actual live game, you'd have the option in there to say um, show art if there was a picture. And it's this image here that would come up. You've got an option to put a picture here and a token somewhere else if you want it. I'm going to double click on the art and have a look. Where do I want to put choose art from? I'm going to go in here and I've got Chad Cleric's portrait. So I'll select that, select file, and it brings it through. Now I can go through here and build my character however I see fit. Um, it does all the things you'd expect, like it will automatically apply modifiers. Um, I'm just going to go through and leave this mostly as normal. Um, I'm going to give them slightly higher intelligence and wisdom, and we'll leave it there. I can then go through and put his skills in. I've got, if you mouse over most things in Foundry, you'll see it gives you um, like a, a tool tip. So one tick is proficient, two ticks is half proficient, three is expertise, and then back to blank. And you'll see again the modifiers changed as we went through. So I can go through and put a few things in if I wanted to. A lot of this is self-explanatory in here, so you can type over things like armor class, hit points, hit dice, um, the initiative. One of the features at the moment where you have to currently do a little bit more work in Foundry is putting class features in. Um, so if I were to go to the Features tab, you see he has no levels in any classes at the moment. So if I go over to my Compendiums tab, and I'm covering all these different tabs in the documents I'm writing for you, um, we've got classes, and this will open up all of my classes. Now, the actual character here is Cleric Wizard. I'm going to go over to Cleric. So I'll drag Cleric on, and we'll see we now have class level Cleric. I came from using Fantasy Grounds. Now, in there, you'd drag the class on again and again, and it'd increase levels and prompt you things. You don't do that in here. Once I've added it in, I just go to edit item, details, and I'd say what level is this character. I put in level 10, the close, and that's now in. You see proficiency goes up automatically with the class levels that are applied. Now you also have to go and add in class features manually at the moment. And because there's only SRD content in there, you can find yourself having to either create your own or use modules that are available legally <clears throat> or less legally online to fill things in. I'm using good old SRD content at the moment. It's locked down. So I could go through and just find the features in here that I wanted to add in. So I've got Channel Divinity. Um, I've got his Turn Undead. 
um, I'm going to go through. I can't remember all the other ones he's meant to have, so I'm going to just throw a couple of the things in. I know this person's got the light domain, but I don't think that's in the SRD. Let's have a look. Nope. So I'm just going to give him one more thing just to fill it in a bit, even if it isn't a cleric thing. We suddenly also got a grappler feat. So I can go through and I can add all these features in. In future videos, I'm going to go through some of the more complex stuff you can do with these. But I would go through adding in class levels, active and passive abilities. I've also got a spell book. So you can choose what the modifier is in here. It will automatically calculate spell DCs and we can see how many um, how many's got available. I'm then going to go in and go and pick in the spells compendium. I can add some spells in. So I'm just going to throw a few in here. I'm not paying too much attention to what they are. It's all just a test after all. But I can go in and you see it automatically goes and puts them into the level that they're meant to be. We can also choose how many spell slots. Well, it automatically calculates how many spell slots they have. I'm starting our day off just by putting the maximum in. And we have um, our prepared spells in there as well. Other tabs in here I'll cover in different videos. Um, core contains the default. Now I, hack, I actually use a mod that changes um, an alternative character sheet. What I like about that is you can set things to favorites. I really recommend that because otherwise you're having to click through your tabs to use your features. I can go through and decide that items, spells, or abilities are one of my favorites, and it shows up in here. Makes it really handy for players in combat to have quick access to those features and those tools. We've also got the inventory tab. I'm going to cover that in more detail in another video because there's a lot to be done in there. The features I talked about, the spell books, biography, if you want to put any of your character backgrounds in, and then private notes is um, an additional module which I I'm going to use a lot as a player for keeping my own sort of notes in there. So we've just made so far the initial screen, um, all the information for our character. We've got no way to actually use this yet. Um, and if I was to drag him out onto the map, he would just have this picture floating around. So what I want to, want to do for him is add a token. So if I go to the token tab, when they don't have a token yet, it calls it prototype token. When they do have one, it changes the token. So this isn't just as straightforward as selecting a picture. Um, we can choose settings on how we want it to be displayed. Now, if you were to drag, if you started a combat that had eight dire wolves and one strad wolf, would you want your players to be mousing around and go, oh, well, hold on, what's this about? Same as how you have the good old, you know, a group of bandits and then one bandit leader. People suddenly start focusing on the one who just happens to have a different name, but no different description in law. So in here, you can choose what they see, if anything. Image is where I'll pick the token. So if I go in here, I'll go in. I've already put it into a folder already for you. I've picked Chad's token. Click select. Select the file. Update token. And he's now got a token. Not that we can see it yet. Um, I will go and drag him out. Oh, I'm not in a scene. Course. I'm going to go back to my Argon Vostol splash screen. So this isn't a real battle map screen we're on at the moment, but just to show you, if I drag him out, I've wrecked the whole thing. What a way. I'm too far gone into this video to cut that and edit it, so I'm going to look at it again just to show you. Sometimes things don't go to plan. If I go back in, I look for token, select, update. Let me try that again. There we go. So now in there, I've gone for top-down tokens with Foundry. It's converted me. I can now go in and I can see him on there, this top-down token that my player actually made himself. I thought it was pretty cool. That, is, that shield is the holy symbol that was above the abbot's fireplace up at the um, abbey. 
he decided to take it and have it repurposed as his new holy symbol onto a shield. And then he updated his token himself, and his bag of holding is on his hip. It's a very cool token. Um, there's additional stuff we might want to do though with the token. It isn't just about picking an image. In there, we have options for vision. So if you go on, I mean, I used Fantasy Grounds in the past, and what you set in there as their senses, things like infravision, um, their view distance, didn't really mean much other than being written on the token. In here, we can affect it. So we can say, does this person have vision? Um, so can, can they see? That's handy for you as a DM, because it means that when you click on a, like a token during combat or a scene, you will see what it sees. That can be really handy as your players are moving around, say, Argon Bostolt. You might want to have an idea of just how far down this corridor can they see. Um, so yeah, I, I like having that on. Dim vision. So how many feet, if you are setting your maps up correctly with grids and distances, which I'll cover in the next video, how uh, many feet can your token see, both dim and bright? What I like to do for things like infravision, well, infravision, I'm showing my age there, dark vision, um, because there isn't a way to automatically have them see in shades of grey, which um, dark vision is technically meant to be, I like to give them the distance of their dark vision in dim and then their normal vision in um, bright. So what that means is if they're in a dark room, they can the player can tell how far they can see normally and then beyond that, they see, you know, what's in the dark vision. Um, sight angle, you may not, I, I find this quite specialist, you may not want player vision to extend behind them because they can't see at the back of their head. You may want to put it in a cone going forward. That sounds good in practice. I've tried it toying around with some tokens, and I think it just makes for a lot of messiness, and your players kind of deliberately spinning around, trying to look out, look around, and it can be a bit distracting. If, we can, if the rules tell us to accept that a player can move around freely within their five-foot square, I think we can also assume that they can look around freely in that five-foot square. We then have emit dim and emit bright. This is, do they give off light? I see a lot of players with dark, a lot of DMs with dark vision accidentally put that in here. Um, but what that then means is, is that player gives out light for everyone to see and it disrupts the scene. So this is where you would put, if something is glowing or if you have a character who has the light spell or a torch, you can set them up in here. There's a very handy macro that will toggle between whatever you put in here and zero. So I'll cover macros in the future, but that's a macro I've got on my bar straight away. It means that I can click on a player or a creature and just hit a button and that light effect toggles. It's great for if your player says, well, I want to light a torch. You can just do that. And in fact, there's a module that will say, when you run that macro, remove one item called normally called torch, from the player's bag. That's really handy for something that you might not have bothered tracking torches in the past, and your players might not have felt the need to go out and buy them, but when you're doing this in Barovia, where you should have spooky torches, and let's face it, if, you're, if you've gone out your way to buy this program for all the ambience features, why don't you start using that? It can be really handy and scary to have them realise no torches are getting low, torches have now become a thing you need to buy. You can also change the colour of your light. Um, I know this particular player in my campaign has his light spells being stylized as a light blue. One problem with Foundry at the moment that I don't like is that it's not very smooth how it transitions between light sources. If I have a player who gives out light blue and I have another player holding a torch that gives out orange light and they're next to each other, whenever one of them moves, their light kind of overrides the other. So you can have a bit of a disco effect. So that isn't great, but what it normally means is one of my players just goes, oh, well, you use your light effect. I'll turn mine off at the moment. So I go, can go through and put that in. I'm going to say he has 60 foot, um, 60 foot dim, 30 foot. I know it would be different to that in the game. I can then click on resources. So this means that you can have certain things displayed above your tokens. 
um, for people who are able to view that. So who will this show for? Nobody, just a person who owns that token. You can set permissions on individual tokens. Um, just the owner when they hover their mouse over it. Anyone if they hover their mouse. Um, just the owner all the time or always for everyone. That's normally going to be health, but you can have loads of different things showing here. You can have like spell slots showing, what are their modifiers for particular stats, um, how much gold do they have, what are their skills in certain things. AC is a very handy one. A lot of people like to have the AC show on their characters. Um, I normally go with on, I, I go with everyone's health on hover just visible for me as the DM so I can tell when things are starting to get low. Something else you can set in here, um, oh, if I go back into that, is the um, scale. One thing I didn't mention actually is when you have the scale set in a scene, which is something I'll cover later, when you have the size set um, on your creature, it will scale the token accordingly. So if I create a gargantuan sized creature, when I create the token, it will go, right, well, I know that gargantuan means it's this many squares by this many squares. There we go. And it will create that automatically. So that's a very quick video just passing through some of the basics of creating a player character sheet. I skipped over obvious stuff like writing an AC and hit point. I'll do more things on that in the future. Sorry if it's a bit of a rough, rough cut video. I'm, I'm not into making a proper streaming thing or a channel. This is just trying to help you out. So I'll make another video shortly. And thank you very much for watching.